Hello, welcome to this talk about AGL and his web runtime. My name is Antia Puentes. My colleague, Lorenzo Tilbe and I, are software engineers at Igalia and web browser developers. Today, we are going to talk about AGL's web runtime and his HTML5 UI, which we have integrated, developed, and maintained. These are the specific topics that are going to be covered by the talk. We will be introducing Igalia, then commenting why a web runtime is important for a year. Next, we will explain the technologies used, in specific, Chromium and the Web Application Manager. Following comes an overview about the HTML5 demo with an explanation about how to try it. We will be seeing how easy it is to create your own web applications, have them running on the device and remotely debug them using Chrome DevTools. After that, we will watch a short video showing the HTML5 demo running on the reference hardware. Finally, we will comment on the exciting ongoing work and future plans for the web runtime and the HTML5 demo in the platform. Hope we have a good time together. Igalia is the top consultancy in open source browsers, where we play an essential role in projects such as Chromium, Blink, WebKit and Firefox. Besides this, our engineers have expertise and important contributions to a wide range of technologies such as compilers, JavaScript engines like V8, JavaScript Core and SpiderMonkey, graphics, multimedia and accessibility. We are as well active participants in several standard bodies. Specifically, what brings us to you today is our expertise in web browsers and embedded devices. We have considerable experience in creating, maintaining and optimizing browsers to meet the thought requirements of this kind of devices. We are a global company working with customers all over, all over the world. Our team spans time zones and cultures, with employees based in Asia, Europe, Australia and the Americas. In a connected world, web technologies are paving a new way for developing infotainment and other systems for the car. Web-based runtimes have become a real alternative, which makes providing a good web runtime a key strategy decision. The goals of AGL Web Runtime are Integrate full HTML5 support into the platform To provide web applications the same level and integration that native applications in terms sorry, of security, performance and isolation Another important goal is giving freedom to choose any front-end libraries and frameworks to create the user interface it is possible to use technologies like Node, Enact, React or other toolkits like Flutter to implement the UI. Having a web runtime enables us to use standard APIs provided by web technologies out of the box and gives us the potential to reach a big community of developers. It uses development, debugging, customization and interoperability with other services through WebSockets. Thanks for watching us. Learning will continue from here. I will come back later to explain how you can create your own web apps and have them running on AGL's platform. Thanks, Antia. So, as you mentioned, uh, we hope everybody's uh, safe and we hope to be meeting in person anytime soon. So, um, in order to provide this web runtime uh, into AGL platform, uh, the solution that was determined as uh, uh, the way to go was based on Chromium and the Web Application Manager, or WAM, that was initially developed for WebOS uh, OC platform and open source by LG. So the reason to do that is that uh, uh, when approved, on a proof of concept, we verified that Chromium was working on the embedded devices that were provided and was already providing a natural support for cloud-native vehicle technologies that could be useful for, for AGL uh, ecosystem. It was intended to already integrate the upstream of some Wayland Chromium implementation that Galia has been developing to make the better possible use of modern UPU capabilities that were avail available on the uh, reference hardware. 
So getting a bit more specific, how are Chromium and WAM architecture pieces fit together? So basically Chromium uh, provides uh, the, the web capabilities engine uh, that already ships a separation between processes, browser render, GPU or communication ones that uh, allow us to have isolation between uh, processes and secure interac interactions. It also has like a huge adoption, like it's the main uh, web engine uh, used nowadays and it provides continuous improvement on functionalities and optimizations. And on top of that, what uh, the Web Application Manager and WAM does, it's allowed to launch web apps as a standalone applications. So they are can be integrated in this AGL security model to ensure permission isolation and sandboxing. It also provides a web app lifecycle depending on the visibility. So when the web apps are switched, uh, it, it takes care of handling how surfaces are changed and so on. And it simplifies other extra components of the browser. So in order to have an overview of the architecture, basically we have the HMI, HMI layer where the web apps live. And then we have the uh, AGL application framework where WAM uh, and Chromium that is wrapped into libcba uh, shipping webOS Chromium. They, are, they have FAK to integrate their the application lifecycle support, security model and window manager. Uh, so uh, what we have to be doing over this time was to integrate the launcher process to integrate initially with Western Wayland Compositor that was uh, recently modified to run on top of the new AGL specific compositor component that was developed by Collabora. There's like additional documentation there if you want to follow up more into the details about that. And we have been under continuous evolution to get adapted to different improvements of the AGL platform, changes in the security model or object upgrades. So what can be done to test this HTML5 version? So basically everything is already shipped and integrated into the AGL build system and get rid repositories since the EGISOS version. It's currently uh, into part of meta AGL uh, Yocto uh, meta AGL demo, sorry, Yocto layer, and it's using in the back in the back end the same application framework services as the Qt version, uh, which are then exposed through WebSocket APIs. Um, so what what actually does is it structures the UI in a permanent visible home screen, an application launcher, and and the space for the demo web apps. So the repositories are available there. They can be searched in Garrett when filtering for HTML5. So they are basically interesting uh, starting points for people willing to look into a boilerplate on how to create web apps uh, into the platform. And Antia yeah, will be explaining later on about the details on how to create a new one from the scratch. So how to start uh, testing and checking the HTML image on the different hardware. So there's uh, documentation on how to get started uh, and, and create an image from the scratch. You just need any of the available reference or community uh, BSPs that are available, or even you can test that on Qmu. Those are the different uh, support, uh, some of the different supported hardware platforms. The way to, to build it is actually uh, doing the repo in it of some of the available versions. In this case, the latest one that are Jumping Jellyfish or Cookie Koi. You just see the repository and sync it to download all the dependencies and configure the build and, co build and compile all the stack with Yocto, uh, as, as mentioned there. You just provide uh, instructions to build the uh, AGL demo and then bit bake uh, demo platform HTML5. So the details about the recipes specific for WAM and Chromium 79 are available on Garrett too. Uh, they can be checked there or just uh, yes, uh, in case anyone wants to add additional dependencies or contribute or test uh, the platform. And then after building, the generated image will be available at uh, build TMP. With that, that can be just directly flashed into uh, an SD or virtually into Qmu and then can be boot for the first time. So how does the HTML5 layout looks like? So basically, uh, you can see an entire UI that is the home screen web application that shows a few application shortcuts in the main area that is to the left, uh, and the application window center where the applications show what they are containing or 
uh, the application launcher that is being shown by default that is actually another example of a web app that shows the entire list of applications in the system and use the app framework to launch them uh, so now my colleague Antia will be talking about the details of the internals on the web apps. We will be showing now how you can create your own web apps. Packaged web apps, also known as widgets, follow the packaging and XML configuration, which is a technical recommendation from the W3C. A web app has three mandatory elements a config XML manifest file that contains metadata for the web application. It includes information like the application identifier, its name, and the set of permissions and required services and APIs needed or provided. The second element is the content, also known as the entry point. It can be an HTML file, an AGL service, or in case of native application, an executable file. The last element is the icon associated to the app. These three elements, the source code and any web resources needed, are packaged into a WGT file which can be installed on the device. As we have commented before, developers are free to choose the web technology or framework they wish to develop the UI. We can see in the slide a config XML manifest file for a simple YouTube application. Packaged applications are zip files which can be signed and whose content is described by the manifest file, which must be places, placed sorry, at the root of the widget directory. Among the data described, we can find the ID of the application, which must be unique, its version number, name, icon and description, the content tag which sets the application's entry point and its type. In this case, it is an indexed HTML file which contents we will be seeing next. Very important is as well the set of required permissions. The example is asking for permissions to be displayed and play audio. Relevant is as well the set of APIs provided by the application framework that the web, the web application requires. In particular, this one is asking to use the home screen API. The set of permissions and APIs will be used by the security system to ensure that the application only access to the services it is supposed to. For the YouTube application we are using as example, the entry point is an index HTML file consisting on a wrapper to a window location which will be providing the service. To pack a web application, you can use the zip or widget packaging tool provided by the application framework. Any of these tools will create a widget file from a widget directory. Once the WGT file is created, you can copy it on the device and install it using the application's framework utility tool, which can be used to install, list and uninstall application and other useful things. The application will be installed in the user local lib AFN applications directory, where all the applications live. It will be ready to be run on invocation. At this point, we know how to create web applications and have them running on the device. But what if the application needs to interact with the services provided by the system? We will see how web applications use and connect to the services and APIs given by the application framework. AGL provides a wide range of APIs and services for infotainment, telematics, connectivity and instrument cluster. Examples are geolocation, radio, HVAC, navigation, and audio mixer. Web applications connect to, this to these services through web sockets using a specific web socket protocol. AFP.js implements the protocol in JavaScript. To connect to the services, web apps can use this implementation on his or his wrapper, AGL-GS API. 
In the example, we are connecting to the audio mixer service from a web application using AGLJS API. The service provides methods audio mixer volume and audio mixer subscribe, among others. Using AGLJS API, the web application calls to the service audio mixer volume method to change the volume to a new value. To react to volume changes, the web application calls to the service audio mixer subscribe method passing volume chains as the event of interest and a handler function. When a volume chains event happens, the handler fun function will be invoked and the web application will move its volume slider to the new value. Underneath, all the communication between the web application and the service is done using WebSockets. Applications available in the HTML5 UI demo, like Settings, HVAC, and the Audio Mixer, use extensively the services provided by the application framework to show the current status of many settings in the system or to change them. Screenshots of the Settings and Audio Mixer applications are shown in the slide. We have learned how to create web applications, install, and run them on the device and connect them to services. But what happens when something fails? Web applications can be debugged remotely using the Chromium Remote Inspector. To enable it, build your Jocto image adding the AGL Devon layer. The Web Application Manager will make the Remote Inspector available at the URL consisting in the device IP address and port 9998. When opening the URL in the Chromium browsers on your PC, the list of web applications currently running on the device will be shown. After clicking in one of the listed applications, your web app can be debugged from your PC using Chrome Dev Tools through the Remote Inspector. You can use the JavaScript console, modify HTML and CSS Live and use many other helpful features provided by the Chrome Dev Tools. Let's see how AGL's HTML5 UI demo looks like in the video I am about to play. We would like to present the work we have done for automotive grade Linux. Our work provides the capability of running independent web applications in the demo platform with different levels of permission while maximizing the performance on the different supported hardware devices. This is a pure HTML5 UI of the AGL demo platform running on a Renesis H3 board. This shows the home screen, the application launcher, and some sample web apps that demonstrate several features of the Chromium-based web runtime in the vehicle UI. We evolved the WebOSE Web Application Manager by LG to adapt it for AGL integrating it with the AGL security model, applications framework, and the Ozone Wayland Chromium implementation that Agalia developed. The Web Application Manager allows for isolation of different web apps so that they have their own level of permissions and access to WebSockets exposing JavaScript APIs with different services in the car. For instance, the HVAC application can communicate with the fan system of the vehicle, but other web apps without the same permissions for example, a game, will never have access to those services. Here we can see how the performance of a WebGL game runs smoothly. This is a result of our implementation of Ozone Wayland in the Chromium Upstream, which optimizes the usage of hardware acceleration. Thanks. Uh, so I think I can continue with the current stages of uh, the work that is being done and uh, ongoing plans. So basically the current situation is that we are have several open tasks on which we that are being worked out at the moment. We are we are in the in in the process of upgrading to Chrome 84 version of a uh, WebOS uh, Chromium version. We are improving uh, stability on some scenarios that we have detected that are triggering race condition situations, and we are we are working to fix those. Also, there are some missing functionalities on the demo web apps that are being worked out. 
and and in general we are working on back fixing and maintenance to ensure functionality uh, uh, with the different iterations that are happening on the platform for both a uh, koi and master that is going to be lamprey version uh, and there are several uh, things that uh, could be happening in the medium term to to keep improving on several directions so after the integration with the new compositor was done there's possibilities to have like a deeper integration with it in order to have uh, notifications that are web that interaction between panels and and a few things that are interesting in order to have like a more immersive uh, communication between different uh, applications on the UI. Uh, also, uh, there can be work done on the simplification of the process of uh, porting snippets and web apps into the platform. Uh, constant uh, performance improvement and resource optimizations. Uh, also, there's uh, work that can be done on simplifications on the architecture design to simplify the maintenance work and allow a more a, a easier a more generic use of WAMP uh, and, and adding documentation and more examples of the HTML platform uh, with other with other components uh, and other web technologies and frameworks as, as the mentioned that were uh, like Flutter or any, or any other uh, specific in React React um, UI framework uh, so that's basically the, the update about the status. All the work is tracked uh, openly at the public Jira with the Web App uh, Manager lab label. So anyone with more interest can uh, reach out uh, in the different channels that are besides the mailing list, the dev calls that happen on the and that link they've called Info on Tuesdays uh, on RC uh, or participation on the face-to-face -face meetings and events like like this one that is happening today. Um, and as mentioned, really, really eager. Thanks to everyone. Really eager to see you all in person next time. Uh, and now we have time for questions or comments for anyone willing to. So thank you. Thank you.